Lily. Look, at, you got a brand new look at this little, what do you call that? Doily. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. What episode is this, like? 270. Oh my God. All right. Uh, a little, gonna review some data this, this week, but I, just a quick summary of what's going on. Uh, still measles is being detected in the wastewater in Lubbock and El Paso. Interestingly enough, low levels of H5N1, bird flu, were detected in Baytown. I don't know what's going on in Baytown, but they're fine. It's probably in the animals there. It's probably in, in dairy, you know, cattle or something. Uh, influenza A and B and RSV levels are continuing to fall. And Parvo-19 norovirus and human metanumavirus also going down. So all those respiratory viruses from the, from the winter are beginning to go down. But rotavirus A, which is a big GI pathogen, and parainfluenza virus 3 are still elevated in most cities. So if you get, if somebody shows up with a cold and you know, an upper respiratory infection, most likely it's going to be parainfluenza or COVID is still around. So measles is the biggest problem, continues to uh, be a problem here. 1,024 cases in the United States with 13% of those cases hospitalized, three deaths. Uh, and it's now measles is reported in 29 states, New York City and Washington, D.C. And almost all the cases, 92% are associated with outbreaks, which is defined as three or more cases. So if somebody comes, infects a bunch of people, and that's an outbreak. So reviewing the, uh, the past flu season, the CDC has uh, uh, had a couple of interesting points. Uh, it's on the decline, but it's still around. So you can still get the flu, and they're still saying it because of that, even if you haven't been vaccinated, go ahead and get vaccinated now because there's still flu around. Uh, this season has been categorized as a highly severe season. For children, adults, and older adults, it's the first really severe season we've had since 2017. Um, we've had no new cases of H5, uh, which H5N1, which is really interesting. We remember we were having all those cases, and now we don't have those, and no one's really sure why. So I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to check and see what's going on in the dairy industry and um, uh, in the poultry industry. Uh, Nationally, the rates of respiratory uh, diseases are, are, have dropped pretty dramatically, but we had the highest number of hospitalizations since 2010 and 2011. So really pretty severe flu season. 10 pediatric deaths were linked to seasonal influenza uh, this past week, and so that brings the total to almost 200. So this was a really bad season for kids, and as I mentioned before, uh, the f vaccination rate dropped below 50% in children. So this is, I mean, they, again, these are almost all preventable deaths. Uh, there have been 46 million illnesses, 600,000 hospitalizations, and 26,000 uh, deaths from flu this season. So that is a, a pretty serious season. But I remind everyone, there as many people died from COVID, even though it wasn't a bad season, it's a bad disease, so a smaller number get it, but they still um, they have a high mortality. And as I uh, emphasized before, the CDC is still recommending that people over the age of six months uh, get um, vaccinated even now because flu's around and reminds everyone that there are effective antivirals uh, available. So if you do, if you are a high risk patient and you get flu, take, take Tamiflu, get, you know, take one, one of the antivirals. This just shows the red uh, line with the circles is this season compared to other seasons. You can see we're almost, we're well down below uh, what is considered uh, the ba national baseline for respiratory diseases. But um, anyway, we're, so we're, but it's still around. It's not like it's not, it's not like it's gone. It's still around. Uh, Want to talk a little bit about uh, COVID, An interesting uh, point. You know, we're, we're sort of forgetting uh, that COVID is around, but it's around the world. It's still here. And in a couple of states, Nevada in particular, Hawaii, uh, it's growing. So there's more COVID. Most of the states, it's falling, but there's still a lot. And then uh, in COVID news, uh, Novavax, which is a protein-based vaccine, finally got approved by the FDA. I have no idea why they put restrictions on it for mostly people over 65. Uh, I, I, I don't know. 
I think it should have been approved for, for everyone, but that's what it did. So uh, one point about the, the COVID pandemic in general, while it's lowish low in the United States, as I said, it's kind of steady. It's not going up, going down, just being around. It is rising in Southeast Asia. Uh, so big increases in Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, and other Southeast Asian countries. So COVID is resurging, almost 23% increase in Singapore cases. And I'm not happy to hear that because I'm going to Singapore next week. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take Paxlovid with me and I'm going to take some kits to detect it because there's a reasonable chance I'll be exposed to it. I even think I maybe should get an additional booster, but I don't know. Uh, this is what the numbers look like for COVID in the U.S. You can see they're pretty uh, flat for test positivity, ED visits, hospitalizations. And in the wastewater, it continues to be low, but it's present. I think the most important thing is it's still around. It's just that it's not uh, at a high level, but it's still around. People are still getting COVID. Uh, this is the you know predominant form. It hasn't changed from last week. It's still this. LP81, and I showed you the, the relationship before. It's, it's, it's very similar to those flirt variants that were uh, dominant in 2024. It's evolved a little bit, but not that much. If you look at the Travelers Program, that's looking at uh, waste analysis from airplanes and airports in eight different places. Still around, you can see it's even a little bit on the increase. So. Travelers coming into the country are bringing COVID with them, so it's still around. So it, today I wanted to actually go over two things that uh, are really, really interesting. First of all, uh, we talked about the uh, respiratory syncytial virus and how uh, for the first time this past year we had strategies to actually deal with it. One was vaccinating pregnant mothers so that the babies between zero and six months were protected from the antibodies that are transmitted during pregnancy. And then monoclonal antibody is long acting one that's for kids uh, up until the age of two. So the question is, does that have an impact? And studies from our own uh, Dr. Piedra and Dr. Munoz and Avina Nula from our own Baylor College of Medicine uh, had a really interesting study. So they, they looked at kids uh, who were received either uh, protection because their mothers were vaccinated or received the antibody, and they compared this season uh, to previous season. And the amazing thing is there was a pretty dramatic reduction in the severity of RSV, right? Remember, RSV is particularly bad for kids. Uh, it's always been a high, one of the uh, highest causes of mortality in children and also in older adults. But this season, it was really kind of amazing because they reduced uh, a reduction of at least 50% of all RSV-related hospitalizations in kids under the age of two. So, and this was very cool because it's it's a new um, it's a CDC-sponsored study. It's from the New Vaccine Surveillance Network. It's funded by the CDC, and it's really a, a cool way to be able to follow uh, the response to um, interventions for various viral diseases. So, very exciting result. It shows that the recent advances for RSV actually had an impact in reducing disease by 50%. Then I wanted to respond to one of our uh, viewers who, you know, I'd mentioned the two studies with uh, herpes vaccine, herpes zoster vaccine, chickenpox vaccine, that in one study from Wales reduced the incidence of uh, dementia, and in another study last week I reported or told you about a study that reduced the cardiovascular risk. And so uh, one of our viewers said, like, I don't understand you know, why? And uh, I'm not sure why either, but uh, I just thought I'd give you a little information. So if you look at the herpes zoster, you get chicken pox as a child and you get an immune response that, that suppresses the virus, but the virus doesn't go away. It becomes dormant in the uh, dorsal root ganglia in, along the spinal cord. And so it's just sitting there. It just, wait, it just sits there. And your own immunity suppresses it and suppresses it. But as you get older and your immune responses wane, about one in three adults will have uh, shingles. And what shingles is, is it's the virus is reactivated, it follows the, uh, along the dorsal root, along the peripheral nerves, and ends up at the skin. And it's along this innervation uh, distribution. It's, it's, it, it, it comes out just where the, the, those various nerve roots uh, innervate. So you can get it around the face, you can get it around the neck, uh, abdomen, chest, and back, and it, it can be very, very debilitating. It's very painful, 
You get these uh, classic um, um, viral vesicles that form, big inflammation, it's very painful. So why would uh, getting a, a shingles vaccine and as, as you're older have a difference? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, it's a simple thing, uh, I don't know. But the, the interesting thing to consider is that this represents a low level of inflammation. Uh, and there are a bunch of studies that look at the association with long-term inflammatory responses and how they accelerate cardiovascular disease and maybe other diseases as well. In fact, you know, we've talked about the dementia issue. Maybe that's vascular too. So uh, there's some associations where C-reactive protein or IL-6, which are indicators of inflammation, have been associated with increased cardiovascular disease. And it's possible that getting vaccinated against uh, this particular virus keeps it suppressed so you're not having long-term inflammation. That's just a hypothesis. I don't know if it's true, but it, it, it's the only way I can put together why getting a shingles vaccine might reduce risk for cardiovascular disease and, 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 and dementia. Anyway, uh, it was an interesting question that was posed by one of our viewers. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to congratulate the country of Botswana who received the WHO Gold Tier Certification for eliminating mother-to-child uh, HIV transmission during birth. The first high burden country uh, to do so, and we played a huge role in that. We provided a lot of the physician uh, resources for Botswana, but uh, Bristol Myers Squibb Foundation, PEPFAR, and USAID uh, all helped support this effort, and it's a, it's a huge win for the country of Botswana and a reason why PEPFAR is so important and how USAID and Bristol Myers Squibb really contributed. So congratulations to the country of Botswana. Also, uh, congratulations to Dr. Aaron Sarkar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Family and Community Medicine and Director of Medical Student Education in, in that department, was named by the Houston Business Journal to their class of 2025 40 under 40. These individuals are selected on professional accomplishments, community, community involvement, philanthropic efforts and other exemplary qualities. So congratulations to Dr. Sarker. Uh, also, this week we celebrated the accomplishments of our outstanding faculty, recognize their excellence in clinical care and education. This is a day when we take uh, time to recognize all the great faculty we have uh, and give them awards. It's, it's uh, congratulations to the 181 faculty we're honored. Uh, and thank you, I mean, Baylor College of Medicine is what it is because of our outstanding faculty. Uh, and then six uh, faculty members will receive the 2025 Michael DeBakey MD Excellence Research Awards. This re award recognizes the outstanding uh, published contrib scientific contributions to clinical or basic biomedical research over the past three years, and these awards are supported through the DeBakey Foundation. Uh, and so congratulations to Dr. Hongji Li, Nai Li, uh, Dr. Mandalakis, Dr. Moreso, and Alistair Thompson, as well as Dr. Shang, they all uh, got a DeBakey Award, so congratulations to them. And finally, I just wanted to send uh, Ralph Corey's family my deepest condolences. Uh, Ralph recently passed away, Baylor College of Medicine graduate who went to Duke University uh, for his training was an outstanding academician and um, was my chief resident when I was a resident uh, and served as uh, a real exemplar, exemplary leader for the, the, the residents there and was head of the house staff program there. So uh, my deepest condolences. The family all remember Ralph fondly and, it's, uh, and he's a great Baylor College of Medicine graduate. Anyway, have a wonderful weekend and I can't wait to see you next week.